Hey, 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 guys. So today I wanted to work on something a little bit different. Uh, most people basically only ask me for modeling stuff or animation stuff like how do you do this how do you do that uh, one of the things that I've been looking into a lot recently uh, to try and help Jordan out is basically how do you make your renders look really really good so for example Jordan wants the documentary that we're working on to basically resemble Downton Abbey so what I've done here is I've taken an image from Downton Abbey that is color graded and I've been looking into how do you take the color grading from an image and apply it to another image which is this one that I did of Lusitania out of Blender so this is straight out of Blender with no color grading whatsoever but this is color grading and I found a way to do it and it also works with a little bit of trickery with animated image sequences or full-on video files so in the spirit of helping Jordan out. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this because it's kind of complicated, but not really once you understand the basics. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna come up here, change the mode of this image to indexed, and you can add as many as you want. I'm going to keep it simple and just do highlights, midtones, and shadows, and so that's three. So I'm just going to convert it into three, and there you go. Now I'm going to save these to my color wheel over here so I'm just gonna click on each one of the individual colors and give me a shadow good and there you go and now it's saved and so I'm gonna come over to my palettes dialog and import a new palette from the image that I have open currently and let's just call this Downton outside and click import and it should take a moment there it is and now I need to duplicate these just so that I can have a little bit of wiggle room to work with all right and GIMP for some reason duplicates this one whenever you drag it so there we go now I can come back over here to my palettes right click on the one I just created and turn it into a gradient and it's gonna take a moment there we go now let me expand this and essentially what I'm having to do is line all of these up with their proper values. And you can figure out what the proper value is by, oddly enough, clicking on the hue saturation value slider. So I'm just going to click on the shadow. You see it's very simple for us. It's zero, which you just drag both of these over to zero. And the midtone is 36.5. So this is our midtone color. And I actually need to move this one further that way, 36.5. And you don't have to get it exactly on, close enough is fine. There we go. And now the highlight color is 100, which is all the way over. Again, so drag that one all the way over and recenter this one. Cool. And now that I'm done with that, I can come over to my other image from Blender over here and click on this and duplicate the layer and change its mode to soft light. And then come over here, colors, map, gradient map. And it's going to apply the gradient map that I just made and edited over here to the image. And you can see there's a slight change, not a whole lot but now I actually need to assign the colors to that. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm just gonna zoom in and I'm gonna try and find the color in this image that has a highlight, a midtone, and a shadow. You don't you don't want to just go, oh well this is white and you know this is a this is a midtone and and this is a shadow. You want to stay within the same color. Uh, so this color, this image is like predominantly white. So what I'm going, there's my highlight and there's my midtone. And let's say that this is my shadow. So I'm just going to select that and I'm going to map it to that one that I saved from the indexed photo, drag all of these up and I'll do it kind of slowly so that you guys can see it remapping the colors as I go. Cool, cool, cool. And then I'll do the same thing for the midtones and the shadows. Don't worry about this, we'll fix it in a moment. And 
now I need to select that. And this should make it a little bit darker. Yep. Cool. And now I got to do my shadows, which is this right here. And I think I actually just messed it up. So let me go back and make sure that I didn't just click on the wrong thing. <laughs> me, every single day, clicking on the wrong thing. All right, well now I know it's the right thing. So good, good, good. And then this is going to be my shadow. So I'm just gonna come in here, color exchange, click on you, shadow, boom, boom slide all of these up and I'll do this slowly just so you can watch the image change and there we go now I don't know about you guys but that is a lot less complicated than having to deal with the craziness of blenders node system I I hate dealing with nodes and the compositor and all of that so how do you do this for an animated video, right? So let's say that you have an animated image sequence or anything along those lines. How do you apply this color grading to an image like this? It's not all that complicated, but you do need a special plugin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer from the visible and then I can delete this. Delete. Good. And now just make sure that it's done properly. Cool. Make sure that you have this top layer that you just created selected. And I'm going to, it's called Jimic QT or something. G-M-I-C dash Q-T. You can install this plugin. There are various tutorials online of showing you how to do this. Um, so I'm not going to go over it. It's fairly simple. But I'm just going to open the plugin and it takes a second for it to load. Okay, and I want to type in LUT and CLUT. Cool. Now I want to save it as a .cube file. This is my LUTs folder, and I'm going to save this as uh, Downton uh, Outside. Keep the names uh, Downton Out. That's that's fine. Dot cube. Okay, and make sure that the inputs is the active layer, which is the one that you have selected, and the one below. And what this is going to do is basically it's going to analyze the light value differences in the colors between this layer and that layer. And it's going to save it as a .cube file, which is more commonly referred to as a LUT file, which is basically just a lookup table. So I'm going to click OK and it's going to process it for a moment and it's going to take forever because this is a huge image you'll see that it made a new layer we don't care about this because we're actually going to come over here and this is my lusitania animation now this is already color graded this is what it looks like and this is what it's going to look like when i'm done editing it but let's just say that for whatever reason i'm not happy with this color grade and i wanted to apply it to a animation that's already been made in Blender. So in whatever video uh, editor that you're using, if it allows you to put in LUTs, I'm just going to drag a LUT on top of it and then I need to select the proper LUT. So this is the one that I just made, Downton Out. I'm going to select it and there you go. And if it's too intense for you, all you have to do is just slide the scale. So I'm just gonna go with 50%. And you'll see that this looks really, really different than this one over here. This one is a lot more bluer, uh, a lot brighter in some instances. Whereas, you know, over here with the video playing, not so much. Still kind of, you know, shaded and whatnot. And you can change this by splitting up the video file even more and increasing it or decreasing it. As you can see, there's the difference between those two. So it's... It's a pretty good way of creating a custom color palette for things that you want to use. Now, if you'll notice this image that I made, I took it from an outdoor image and I applied it to an outdoor image. You never want to take something that is outdoors and put it on something indoor because you have a lot less light running around the scene 
than you do over here where you have the atmosphere lighting up every single aspect of the characters and the hundreds and millions of light bounces going everywhere. So if you're if you're wanting to color grade an indoor scene or an indoor movie, I would suggest that you find an indoor scene of a movie that you want to take the color grade from. But this way, you really don't have to worry as much about the lighting and the effects and all of this craziness that you usually have to deal with when it comes to uh, working with Blender. So I hope that helped you guys out, and hopefully this helps Jordan out as well, because he's been driving himself crazy for about six months trying to color grade stuff. Uh, so that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later, and take care.